Uh, before we get started, I do need to mention that the movie summary that I have in this part had to be edited from its original version. Uh, I had streamed the original version on Twitch, but then when I uploaded it to YouTube, well, it got hit by copyright detection, and it was one of those where it blocks the video worldwide, so no one would be able to watch it. Um, the video summary consists of basically screenshots of the movie, and with a few video clips interspersed. And I thought that maybe by being sparing with the video clips, that it might pass the detection that was not the case um even though there was very little video used it was still blocked worldwide so uh i had to remove the video clips from the summary but the flow of the of the video really needed the clips it wouldn't make much sense if they were just removed entirely so i had to come up with a way to try to recreate the video clips so that's what we're going to get right now. That's what you'll get to watch here. But if you do want to watch the original version of this uh, this movie summary, you can watch the Twitch VOD, which does have the original version. But as for right now, please enjoy the recreations of the video clips for Forbidden Siren, the movie. As we're wrapping up Siren 2, as we're saying goodbye, there really is one other thing we should talk about. And that's, there was a Siren movie. You might not have known that. But there was a Siren movie that was released in 2006, the same year that Siren 2 came out. Uh, they came out to, uh, I guess, basically be a, a multimedia franchise together. Game coming out, here's a movie. I guess Sony probably had some pretty big ambitions for Siren. Um, but, you know, I had never really heard of this movie. Like, I heard that it existed, but I'd never seen it. And it's pretty hard to get your you get your hands on. Like, if you were to try to buy it now, the only format that it's available in that I was able to find was, um, was uh, Asian DVD. And even then, like when looking at websites that might ha might have sold this, they were out of stock. Not something that is easy to to find, really. And if you try to look at streaming services, well, this is not available on any of them, anywhere, as far as I can tell. <clears throat> so, what was the reception like to the Siren movie? I guess probably not very good. I'm gonna assume it was not a big money maker. Um, because man, it's not, this thing, this thing seems like it was buried, honestly. It's, uh, it's a movie that's pretty difficult to actually watch. I, I mean, actually find so you can watch it. It's not that difficult to watch. It's not that bad. It's not great, but it's not that bad. Um, and I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about what happens in this movie. So I hope you enjoy this little slideshow I've put together for you about Forbidden Siren, the movie. In 1976, Yamajima Island is experiencing a big storm and a rescue team has been sent in from the mainland. They find the island deserted with only one person remaining. The one person is acting very strangely, sitting in a chair, unresponsive to the rescue team as he hums a song to himself. The words, Dog Live, are scrawled on the wall in blood. He tears a notebook he's holding in two, tears it vertically down the spine so the pages aren't torn. The rescuers try to ask him where the islanders are, but he doesn't answer. He just starts saying, Siren, and the third warning. The rescuers try to take him away, but he resists and starts repeating that when the siren sounds, you can't go outside. Suddenly, we hear the sound of the siren as the man clutches his head and yells. Oh. 
It turns out that the siren is coming from a literal siren. Title screen. Here's our main characters on a boat heading for Yamajima Island. We've got Yuki, the protagonist, Hedeo, her little brother, Osnan, the dog, and Dad, the dad. I don't think we ever get Dad's name. They're city folk, arriving from Tokyo. We're not clear right away why they're going to the island, only that it's to help out Hideo somehow. What kind of help Hideo needs and why is not revealed yet. As the family comes ashore, all the islanders are just staring at them. Not saying anything, just staring. Guess they don't get many visitors. However, the family are met by Minamita, the local doctor, who seems like a friendly guy. Minamita mentions that he was already informed of the situation by the university hospital, which is good, because that means that the situation does not need to be said out loud where we can hear it. The implication, though, is that Hideo has been brought here to heal from something. Everyone piles into the doctor's van, and they head out. The islanders just keep on staring as the car drives by. Everyone gets out of the car and walks through the local market. And the islanders just keep on staring. The family proceeds to not buy anything from the market, and they drive away. They then arrive at the house that the protagonist will be staying at. There's some maintenance needed, as evidenced by the brown tap water and thick layer of dust on everything. Time for cleaning, but uh-oh, a neighbor has arrived. Is she a shibito? Actually, no, she helps out with washing the dishes. The two have a pleasant chat, but then the neighbor says something strange. So you shouldn't go out at night normally, but you extra shouldn't go out if the siren sounds. And also, don't worry about what the siren is, but don't go out, it's the island's rule. At the clinic, it looks like Yugi has been talking to Dr. Minamita about Hideo. She wonders if Hideo will be cured, and Minamita says they just need to take it slow. He says that the islanders may seem cold, but they're good people, and Yuki will like it on the island if she gives it time. Meanwhile, Dad interviews some of the islanders, recording what they have to say. They say that the wind has a strange sound that emanates from the metal tower on the mountain, but few islanders have ever been there. It's dangerous. While Dad explores the island and takes pictures, he comes across a woman in red who suddenly vanishes. Since this is Siren, we can only expect good things from her. Cut to Yuki looking for Hideo, who I guess ran off. She wanders into the wilderness looking for him and comes across a rundown shack. The wall has Dog Live written in blood on it. Yes, it's the survivor's shack from the beginning of the movie. Yuki finds part of the survivor's diary, the one he tore in half at the start. The diary talks about the siren, how it comes from the metal tower, and how on that night in 1976, the islanders started to change after the third siren. It ends there. But then a man appears, a resident living in this shack all these years later. He runs up to Yuki, grabs her, and repeatedly tells her that when the siren sounds, she can't leave the house. Yuki gives him an elbow and runs away, the diary in her possession. Yuki finally finds Hideo, and he's in the company of the woman in red, which, again, probably only means good things. Yuki and the woman give each other a look, and we cut to Yuki and Hideo walking home. On the way home, they hear a scream coming from a building, and wisely walk inside to check it out. So, whatever that is, back home, Dad's going out at night to take some photos of the island. We've been told that going out at night is dangerous, but I guess Dad does what Dad wants. Later that night, uh-oh, neighbor is looking through the window, 
Uh-oh, the power went out. Uh-oh, the dog's barking outside. Uh-oh, a phone call with a strange voice on the other end. Uh-oh, the siren. Uh-oh, Hideo's gone. Yuki goes outside to find Hideo pointing up at the tower and takes him back inside while the friendly neighbor stares at them, changing her status to creepy neighbor. Meanwhile, Dad is on his hike in parts unknown, though he doesn't hear the siren where he is. He walks off into the darkness, and we hear him yell out in surprise. Tomorrow morning, Yuki and the doctor are searching for Dad, but he's nowhere to be found. Then bats! Then the doctor vanishes. Yuki continues wandering, now looking for both the doctor and Dad. Yuki runs from strange noises she hears in the trees. She ends up back at the building that we saw that religious ritual happening in. No one else is there this time, leaving Yuki free to look around, only to find Dad. But Dad's dead. Yuki runs out and into the doctor, who is confused as to where Yuki went to. Yuki and the doctor return to the building, bringing a cop with them. They go to investigate the body, but there's no body to be found. Where did Dad go? Good news, Dad's at home and is also alive. He says that he tripped and fell, injuring his leg, but fortunately, the injuries are minor. He is acting a little strangely, though. Also, Osnan starts barking at him for apparently no reason. Enough about that. Now for a dream where Yuki remembers Hideo in an ambulance, apparently having some kind of medical emergency. We've never been told about what his condition is, so this is our first clue into what might be wrong. However, the dream only lasts for a few seconds, and Yuki wakes. The next day, Yuki brings Austin his food, only to find that he's gone. Dad doesn't know where he went, and is still acting strangely. Yuki goes to look for the dog, and find Dad's video camera out in the field. She watches the recording, and we see the camera's perspective of the scene when Dad was hiking in the darkness. It doesn't tell us much. We hear Dad yell out, and the camera hits the ground. Yuki is showing the doctor the recording, saying that she thinks someone attacked Dad. Yuki is concerned that Dad is acting strangely, and Osnan leaving must have something to do with the siren from the other night. The doctor insists that the siren is just part of the island's folklore. Yuki mentions the survivor's diary, and the doctor is interested in seeing it. Yuki's back home, and finds that Dad isn't. She looks through his PC and finds something there about Yamajima. The file mentions the Roanoke colony and the Mary Celeste, two incidents involving people vanishing, just like Yamajima in 1976. Meanwhile, the doctor continues to rewatch Dad's video. He then looks through an old file in which we see the picture of the survivor. In that file is a plastic baggie containing the other half of the ripped diary. Meanwhile, Yuki finds a file on the PC that recounts a story about Yamajima Island, saying that in the 15th century there was a deadly epidemic, and the infected were brought to Yamajima to be isolated. We cut to the outdoors to see that the woman in red is reading the same story to Hideo. It turns out that part of the story involves the islanders capturing a mermaid and eating it, which is said to give you eternal life. Yuki then reads an article from a newspaper from 1976 about the Yamajima disappearance. She realizes that the diary must be linked to the disappearance. Also included on the PC is a video recording made by the rescue team that night. Yuki watches it and sees the survivor from that night warning the rescuers about the siren. The scene goes much the way we saw it at the beginning, though oddly, we don't hear the siren in the video. Yuki then reads that the survivor committed suicide shortly afterwards, but with another click, Yuki sees an ancient drawing of the mermaid referenced earlier. She's wearing red! Oh no! The woman in red is a mermaid! Or she ate a mermaid! One of the two! Yuki runs! She finds the place that the woman in red and Hideo were at earlier, and does find them there. She tells Hideo to come with her, and then there's a stare-off between the two women. It's very dramatic. But oh no, the siren! And Hideo faints. Yuki carries him to the survivor's shack, which must have been the closest shelter available. Once there, she looks into a mirror and realizes that dog live on the wall is actually... God. Evil. 
<laughs> oh no! The resident then appears. He once again tells Yuki not to go outside, otherwise she'll be eaten? The eaten part is new. We then hear grunts and groans coming from outside the shack. Is it finally time for Shibito? Yes, it is. They're all over the place, peeking in through the walls and the ceiling. The resident tells Yuki to stop the siren and is then grabbed by the Shibito. They eat him, I guess? That's what he said they'd do. Yuki screams and runs out of the shack with Hideo. They get back home and Yuki packs up. She has a plan. The two of them will make a break for the harbor, hide in the ship there, and ride back to the mainland in the morning. As Yuki looks for things to take in Dad's room, she comes across Osman's collar, hidden in the cabinet. It has blood on it. Along with it, she finds a large envelope labeled, Photos Taken After the Islander's Disappearance. Among the photos, she finds some shots of the house. One of the photos stands out, a shot of Hideo's room. In the photo, there is a door to another room, but that door's been covered up in the present day. Yuki uncovers it and goes through, and finds photos of the Islanders from 1976. But wait! Yuki recognizes them from the present day. There's the cop, there's the neighbor, and there's the doctor. But how can this be? No time to think of that now. It's siren time. This is the third time the siren has sounded. In the diary, the survivors wrote that the Islanders started to change after the third one. Yuki leaves the room, but Hideo's gone again. Yuki looks for him. She actually finds him very quickly, as he's hiding in a closet. But she also finds Dad, who tries to kill them with a shovel. Dad stumbles and bumbles around with his shovel, murmuring utterances under his breath as Yuki and Hideo hide in the darkness. To the movie's credit, this part actually does kind of feel like Siren. Most of the movie doesn't, but this part does. Let's watch for a bit. is successfully hiding from dad, but her cover is blown when her phone rings. The phone says that dad is calling? But how can that be? Dad finds them due to the sound, but Yuki pushes her way past him and manages to stun him with a fire extinguisher. Yuki and Hideo run out of the house. To safety? No. Because they run into the cop, who of course is now a shibito and aims his gun at them. Yuki pushes him, and the cop responds by firing his gun indiscriminately in every direction. You can make your own joke here. They make it to the harbor, but there's no place to hide? Where did the ship go? Where should they go? Hideo points at the tower, and off they go to the climax of the movie. However, the neighbor is looking for them, and she is now a Shibito as well. A cell phone rings nearby, distracting the neighbor, allowing Yuki and Hideo to sneak away. The two reach the tower, and Yuki begins climbing with Hideo tied to her back. But uh-oh, it's the resident, who I guess wasn't eaten, but turned into a shibito instead. He's grabbing at Yuki's ankle, trying to stop her from climbing, but she's able to kick him off and continue her climb. But at the bottom of the tower, shibito are gathering. There's no going back now. Yuki sits Hideo down and makes her way over to the siren. She pulls off a piece of metal railing and starts smacking it. Two smacks. Three. Four. Give it five. Six times. The seventh smack finally breaks the siren and sends it careening to the ground below, halting the noise. Is it over? Maybe not, because the doctor is suddenly at the top of the tower, and he tells Yuki that breaking the siren won't make a difference, it'll still sound. And he's right. The doctor tries to tell Yuki something, but the noise is too loud. After a few tries, Yuki finally hears what he's saying. Before we continue, I should mention that the big twist of the movie is about to be revealed. If you have an interest in watching this movie yourself, you may want to stop watching this video now. If not, well, here we go. Uh...
So Hideo was never actually in this movie. Hideo died years ago, which left Yuki with the mental condition of seeing and hearing Hideo like he's actually there. We get flashbacks of scenes earlier in the movie where it turns out that Yuki was actually talking to empty air. And it turns out that Yuki's dream of Hideo in the ambulance was actually when he died. Yuki doesn't want to hear any of this. Is the doctor even telling the truth? Yuki shimmies her way to the other side of the tower to get away from him. Yuki's sack is still there, and she throws the sack at the doctor, revealing that it was full of photos of Hideo. Yes, it was literal emotional baggage. So, was Yuki living in an illusion, and is the illusion now broken? Well, there is still a crowd of Shibito on the ground, so maybe not. They're all still clamoring for Yuki. Also, the doctor is a Shibito now. With Yuki losing everything she thought she had, and after looking out into the distance where the ocean has now turned red for reasons, she lets go of the tower and falls to the ground. Daylight. Yuki lies in the hospital, somehow having survived the fall. The doctor and dad talk, neither of whom are Shibito. Dad wonders why Yuki hears the siren. The doctor thinks it's a hallucination. The doctor then tells us the rest of the story of the 1976 disappearance. The survivor who actually heard the siren actually murdered the other islanders. The doctor then says that the islanders' belief that when you hear the siren, you shouldn't go outside actually means that those who can hear the siren shouldn't go outside. After their talk, the doctor notices the diary in Yuki's pocket. He puts it together with the half that he already had and begins reading. Meanwhile, the woman in red, who is real, starts singing in a field. The siren sounds, and Yuki's eyes open. This is the fourth time we've heard the siren. The doctor continues to read the diary. The survivor wrote that there was a fourth siren, and upon hearing it, decided that he had to kill everybody. Uh-oh, Yuki's got a knife. She stabs the doctor as we see the woman in red, and the ocean starts to turn red again. Credits. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little summary of the Siren movie, and uh, I think that hope after that you get the idea that it's not really a Siren movie, you know? When I read the description of the movie, it was that... This was loosely based on Siren 2. And nah, 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 it's not. It, it, the fact that it takes place on Yamajima Island doesn't mean it's based on Siren 2. Um, I don't, I didn't enjoy it very much. Now, I think that you can take that in two ways. One is as a horror movie. <laughs> and no and also as a siren movie well really no because if what you're coming for is a movie adaptation of siren or siren 2 you're really not getting it here like you do see a little bit of shibito and there are, you do hear a siren you do see some scenes of red water and a woman wearing some red robes and there is something but nah 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 it's it's not a terrible movie um, but it just wasn't, it didn't give me what I was looking for. And it's not really surprising to me that this is not a movie that, um, hasn't really gotten any re-releases or a wider distribution or anything like that. I kind of think this is not a movie that will be remembered. I think it's something that'll just, uh, fade away into our own personal archives. Maybe this movie is archive item Number 101, you got Forbidden Siren, the movie. You didn't like it very much. Well, I, I didn't. I shouldn't say you didn't like it. I think that if you like Siren, there's a good chance you won't like the movie because it's not really a Siren movie. It, I, I don't know. It, well, I mean, I think that you got the idea of why I think that from, from that summary. Um, but if you want an even shorter summary, I think that we can say that this movie... Basically, I think that it is a good embodiment of a very classic uh, story in literature that we all know. I will paraphrase. I must destroy the siren, Yuki said. No, Yuki, 
said the doctor, you are the siren. And then Yuki was a siren. And that is Forbidden Siren, the movie. It's an interesting curiosity, but it didn't give me anything I really wanted here. Uh, I would be interested in seeing like a genuine movie adaptation of Siren or Siren 2. This was not it. But this did come out at the same time as Siren 2. And, um, well, you know. You know. I've, I've said what I think about it. But what about Siren 2 the game? Well, this is our this is the end of our time with it. We've been going through this mission by mission, cutscene by cutscene, archive item by archive item. And uh yeah, I like the game quite a bit. I still think Siren 1 is a more interesting game in terms of its structure and the story, the characters, and just how unique it was. But Siren 2 I do think is a very good uh successor for the first game, and it's very frustrating to me that this game never got uh, a North American release. It's certainly good enough. Like, it's not bad or anything. I don't know why this wouldn't have come over. All I can think about is that maybe the original Siren just didn't do well enough here in North America, that Sony maybe didn't feel like Siren 2 needed to come out. I've also heard some people say that since the PlayStation 3 was coming out, maybe... Sony was feeling that, you know, don't release this first party game for the PS2 right now. We need to focus everything on the PS3 and get people hyped for it. That could possibly be it. I don't know if that's it, but I could imagine that maybe it might be it. But this game did have a full English translation. Just never came out over here. It is a tighter game than the first one. It's mechanically improved. Um, but like I've mentioned, there is a certain charm to the first game in how much it hates you and doesn't really want you to play it. Siren 2 doesn't really have that. Um, it does on hard difficulty, really hate you on hard difficulty, but if you play it on normal, it's really not that difficult to get through. I found it very enjoyable. I liked it a lot. Not quite as much as Siren 1. Uh, and I guess that's really all I have to say about our time with Siren 2. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this let's play of it uh several people had been asking for it for quite some time since the first game but took me a while to actually do this because well siren one was an old favorite of mine i'd played the game back before i had ever started lping uh so i really so once i once i came out on ps4 it was pretty easy for me to think hey why don't i do an lp of this but this game never played it because it never came out here and uh emulation always had a problem with this game until recently. So this was sort of a forbidden game for me up until recently. Eh? Eh? Yeah. So this is the end of our time with Siren 2. I've enjoyed playing it. I've enjoyed showing it to you. And I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Um... And is there, is there a chance that Sony might ever bring back the Siren franchise? I, they really have never given any indication that they're going to do that. But And of course, uh, Toyama and his team, after Siren, Siren 2, and Blood Curse, they made uh, Gravity Rush, Gravity Rush 2. I don't actually know what Toyama's team has been working on since then. There's, there's always like a little sliver of hope, like a little spark, because I don't know what they're working on. And until they really, until they announce what their next game is, and it turns out to not be Siren, we can always hope that maybe that's actually what they've been working on. But like I said, this is the end of Siren 2. I hope that you've all enjoyed it. I certainly have enjoyed it myself, and uh, I'll see you next time for another game.